Welcome back to the Nullify Take channel here on YouTube, where I've got the TNT takes for you on Million Dollar Island, episode four, and we're back with top takes here for this episode. Uh, it was the big episode that we all were waiting for because we knew coming into this episode that Brett had a really big decision to make. He was going to put camp versus camp in this episode, and it was sort of hyped up to be this big episode which would mean there was going to be this big purge a lot of people were going to leave the game and i have to say for me personally it did deliver because one of the big problems that i've had so far with this season has been that there has been actually too many people and it's been very difficult to get to know those castaways those cast members that really matter because i kind of feel like the formula in the show up until this point has been let's give a little bit of air time to people as they start leaving the show as opposed to building a storyline or a journey around the people that are going to win this season so i'm not even sure with the people that we currently have and the people that we know well if they're actually going to get to the end and win the show because i don't think that we can follow traditional reality tv shows like we've seen in the past where the social strategic game can get you to the end because there's going to be a lot of different ways to get there, but we're going to talk about it. You know, Brett's in a lot of trouble already going into this next episode by the way that it ended here in episode five. But before I rattle on too much, please consider subscribing. Please consider hitting the like button, uh, putting the notification bell on so you can be informed the next time a video drops or when we go live to talk about the season of Million Dollar Island. We've also got a lot of other shows lined up that we will be talking about in the future, like Traitors over in Australia. We're going to talk about Survivor. We're going to be talking about The Amazing Race and so forth. There's a lot of reality TV uh, content here on this channel. So please consider subscribing if this is the first time that you've stumbled across our channel. All right. Takeaway number one is, and I kind of already went into it, but Camp vs. Camp really delivered for me here in this episode. Obviously, by the start of this episode, Brett has a decision to make. They go down to the beach. They have this big feast. Everybody is very, very uh, happy to get some food in their system after starving out there on the island. And we've had some of the contestants tell us that we don't get the full view of how bad the conditions was out there. And clearly, by the amount of people that are quitting the show, you can see that a lot of people are really struggling just to get from uh, day to day and to survive there. And I think probably the food alone hasn't been the biggest problem for people, but it's also probably a case of Jim just mentally being out there, not having things that keeps your mind active, like your phone, the internet, uh, all these things that we've gotten used to, they don't have that. So they're kind of left out there with their own thoughts. And then they're also starving on the island with people that maybe they get along with and maybe they don't get along with because a few people have said sort of surviving out there the elements that's that's okay but having to survive other people and the way that the social game is going is something that a lot of people are just not that interested in but in this camp versus camp battle Brett does decide to go with log versus rock he sees them as his biggest competition out there in the game and uh, obviously we know shani who's got the second most uh armbands at this stage in the game she's got fifty thousand. she is in rock camp and it was a pretty cool challenge that they had to do they had to swim out to go get a battering ram as a team they had to work together then swim back out to shore with the battering ram knock some cubes out of a contraption and then they had to build it like a rubik's cube and it came down to whoever could do the puzzle best and like we've seen so many times here with these challenges the team that gets their second the log camp they actually end up solving the rubik's cube puzzle first sending rock camp into a survival battle here this episode um i was kind of devastated for shani i did say she never had a chance after winning similar to brett that one survival game uh she did not get the opportunity to become the joint richest person in the game so maybe now in hindsight i said that she would have been okay for her ally to get one of her armbands i'm sure she would have liked immunity a hell of a lot more because she wouldn't have been able to go home here in this position it was interesting to see them struggle out there for two hours it's a very long time and i think it's easy for us to sit and judge sitting at home not under pressure having to perform having our whole team our whole, tri our whole tribe shouting at us and how to do it and getting into our heads and also um doing those massive rubik's cubes i think it's kind of hard to envision it if you don't have it all set together which it didn't look like they were allowed to build it 
before putting it into its actual placeholder. So that probably made it a lot harder for people out there that had to build this puzzle. So, you know, no shade from me when it comes to that. Takeaway number two, and I kind of alluded to it, it's very hard to get behind individuals in this game currently because you don't know who to shout for because there's so many people. Like even in this episode, we had Taze, the, the pilot, we started getting to know him a little bit and then bam, he's gone. Similar to like, you know, Nate last episode. Um, and by the way, I know I didn't get to talk about that in my top five takes, but Nate, love you, man. You look like a great just dad and husband and family person but man it was disappointing to see you get all those bracelets and then just leave the game instead of fighting until the end i think your family would have been happy if you brought that money home but i mean you know again it was it was hard to see and i'm kind of like tess it's hard to see people quit the game and in my mind it's something that i haven't fully accepted yet as a big reality tv st uh, stan as a fan of survivor um I, I never like seeing people go out in the game in such a way but it kind of makes me wonder how well the show and the concept of the show was sold to the people who went on there um, because in survivor it's seen as a really bad thing when you quit we know jeff probst doesn't like quitters but in this thing it is a part of the game and you can give your bracelet away to someone else and it's a a, a way of making people richer in the game but yeah not a big fan of it at all um, getting to know the people are very hard. The, the only players that sort of stands out for me currently um, in the game is Carla because clearly she is one of the narrators of the show. So that makes me think she will go very deep in the game. Um, the whole rivalry that she had with Adrian was a bit bizarre from a viewer standpoint for me because, you know, she kept saying that Adrian was undermining her and talking badly about it, but I never saw it in the edit. So you may have done it in a way that the edit didn't see it, but um, that was a bit bizarre. But I still like Carla. She's a, a, a strong, a aggressive player in her own way and you need those personalities on the show to make the show move forward obviously we know brett because brett's the richest person out there he's been also a very entertaining personality it's going to be um it's yet to be seen if Corey can deliver like brett has done being the richest person in the game he was clearly a great casting choice and they were lucky to get him be in, in that position so early on to be so rich because he actually ended up driving the show forward a little bit here for me in this episode with some of his banter and the way he had some of his fighting words and you know it's brett's world and all that kind of stuff you need that personality um for someone to shout against or shout for in the game and uh brett i applaud you your reign as the king has been fun to watch so obviously we know who brett is uh we know who shani is because of her battle for all of the bracelets but she's now gone tess really came forward in this episode as a big character as well um she was introduced us right from the start but then has had like a smaller role i would say in all of the episodes until now but in this episode when they lose they go back to camp tess is actually the one that says that hey we need to make sure that there is still some uh food left for somebody that's going to come back to this camp alone she obviously didn't know that it was going to be her necessarily she would have loved for it to be her but um she just wanted to make sure that mothering nurturing side of her that they don't let someone starve out there on their own when they come back to the game so uh, that was a really cool thing to see she obviously does extremely well in the survival challenge and we'll talk about that in a little bit um and then outside of that you know who, who else do we really fully get behind in the game i mean jonathan now is going to get power for a second time but yeah it's very hard to get behind people and i'd like to know from you the audience are you getting similar vibes like i am or do you already have like your core favorites that you're shouting for right now um in, in the show takeaway number three is that um strategy seems to be very um limited in this game up until this point and for someone that loves strategy in big brother the challenge survivor um, it's hard it's a different show i'm still having to get used to the fact that uh, very few people do strategize and i think that there probably isn't too much opportunity to strategize if you don't have power and uh, the core of the show being that it's a roulette that decides who's going to get power uh, that in itself really puts one person at the center of attention and who has to think strategically every time they win power in the game so uh it, it sort of gives you a different vibe in camp, I feel like, because they don't backstab, they don't have these alliances. It does feel like this show, people are coming together and showing the better side of humanity, struggling and surviving and thriving together with their own society, where Survivor is all about the backstabbing and trying to maneuver to get somebody out of the game. Uh, and, and this one, really, how many people have really made a decision up until this point? You know, it's been Brett, it's been Jonathan. 
Um, I even forgot who the first person was who who won power the first time. But there's been very limited amounts of people that have been in that position, that have been in the hot seat where they've had to make decisions in regards to um, who was going to go in. And it's always felt like it's not been too personal at this stage so um, the game's been very clean and uh, it's a different show to get used to i'm still getting used to it myself takeaway number four is the survival challenge now this is something i do like about the show where i don't like the fact that there is limited strategy or we are seeing limited strategy in the game uh, on our screens i do like the fact that they're bringing in a survival element to the game which means that you can't just go out there and completely wing it uh, if you're someone who can catch first if you're someone that can make a fire uh, all these different things then you deserve to be out there because you've shown you can live on the land and uh, seeing people go out here this whole big tribe all being in danger and having to go catch fish it was very interesting to see the different techniques uh, the first thing i was thinking when people got fishing rods and listen firstly i just want to say i'm not a fishing expert but Having that many people in the water so close to the rocks there where Ant said there was going to be a lot of wildlife, I'm sure they would have scattered because there's so many people in the water. Uh, even I know that that's not going to work. So uh, it was interesting to see people go and try and collect, you know, clams. Different people went to go try and collect the, the sea cucumbers, which seemed to be the, the most successful technique at the end with uh, Tess doing that. And what a surprise. You know, she comes in. No experience doing any of this, but she clearly has shown some initiative in her camp to go and find these sea cucumbers. So the fact that she knows how to go and look for them and collect them, that paid off trumps here for her in this specific episode. So I applaud her. She was unexpected, in my opinion, to win this. And uh, I'm fully behind Tess at this stage as well as someone, you know, that I am shouting for. But it kind of feels like there is a handful of people that I'm starting to get behind. And maybe that is what the edit wants us to do as well. But hats off to Tess for beating Tays here in this moment. Obviously, it became very strategic with people. You know, I said there isn't a lot of strategy talk, but there's other types of strategy talk, not about how we're going to get people out of the game because power is so limited. I don't even know if I'm making sense. And if I'm rambling, you guys let me know. But there is some strategy in regards to who's going to help each other in the game, at least. So um, that was interesting to see with Taze getting some people helping him there, but clearly still not enough to beat Tess, who outright won on her own. So hats off. Now, the last sort of bit here, and maybe it is a little bit um, going back and forth about the strategy. There was some strategic talk back at camp when um rock camp goes back to camp they decide that they want to create a new richest person in the game so that finally they can take a shot at brett who has become too high and too almighty sitting at i think 110k and they want to take a shot at the king which is fair enough and they do come up with this plan for seven of them to give their ten thousand dollars which equates to seventy thousand and uh, Shani follows through. She's got the final say. She gives her 50K also to Corey. And Corey now is the person who's going to have to look after Tess in the game. Don't know if he's going to do it. It seems like this is a kind of game where you can take someone at their word and they're going to be very open, trustworthy, and honest about how they do things. So potentially down the line now, Brett will be in a lot of danger. I think they kind of gave it away with the next on Million Dollar Island preview as well because we do see him out there competing. For me personally, I'm a Brett fan. So I want Brett to win and I want for him to continue to like terrorize them and get all the power back in his hands. But I do think... He may be in trouble. I underestimated him the first time. He came from behind. He won. Maybe he can do it again. But uh, I am worried for him. And uh, if he goes up against some great competitors, this might not be as easy as he may think it would be to go down there. But even if he does go home at this point, I will say that his run has been entertaining and fun to watch. I just hope that if he does go, that there is going to be another polarizing big um, character that can take the center stage, which I think Kara could become. Like, I do think if she gets power, she could make some moves in the future as well. But um, that's it here for my sort of initial thoughts, top five takes for this Million Dollar Island episode four. I'll be back tomorrow night again, or tomorrow morning, whenever this drops, to talk about my next top five takes as well. Like I said in the beginning of this, please consider subscribing as we continue to grow here to 2,000 subscribers. We really appreciate the support. And uh, if you don't like the short form and you want me to go into more detail, guess what? We do have Maki and Kahuna who will be going into the full week recap. They went for two hours last week. So um, they had a lot to talk about. So if you want to see the longer format uh, and, and more in-depth conversations, please consider subscribing and following that as well. Catch you guys next time. Bye.